All right, so uh, today we're gonna be learning about croquet. Now the traditional game of croquet has many rules and today we're gonna be looking at a, an abbreviated version uh, where you can be a little bit creative. Um, I'm also going to discuss how you can have a game at home if you don't have an actual croquet set. So you'll notice that today uh, I do not have an actual croquet set so I'm gonna be using a hockey stick, a tennis ball, some uh, tent pegs with papers taped to them and I'm gonna be using two paint stirs as the stakes uh, for both ends of my croquet uh, course. So um, you'll see here today that I've set up my course. Um, you can set up your course however you'd like. You can be creative. Again, in the traditional rules, you can take a look at those if you'd like, but uh, it would be set up differently. Today, we're gonna be creative and uh, make my own. Now, to start your game, you are going to start with players uh, starting at that beginning stake. So you can see that I started at that first stake there, and I'm shooting towards the first wicket, which is made of the paper with the uh, tent peg. So I'm using my stick to uh, hit my ball towards the tent peg with the paper on it. If I hit the wicket, then I move on to the next wicket in the course. So as you can see, I'm going for the second wicket right now. Now, normally you'll play with at least two people and you would take turns. So it's a bit of a race to get to all the way um, to the opposing um, stake and then all the way back to your starting stake. While you're playing with two people, you will take turns. So player one would shoot and then player two would shoot. Now, you get an additional shot if your ball contacts the other player's ball, or if your ball hits a wicket, you get to go again before your opponent. So as you can see here, I've made my way down to the uh, opposite end, I'm at the turning stake. So now I'm coming back the other way. So now I'm doing the course in reverse. So as you can see, I'm moving up to my ball. And again, with other people, I would be taking turns. It's a little bit like a race, trying to get to the other end and back before your mm -hmm. opponents. So it is a huge advantage when you hit those wickets because you get to take another shot. Um, in a traditional game of croquet, uh, you do have the opportunity if your ball rests against the other ball to hit the other person's ball away, but that hit is done through your ball. That would be difficult to do with a hockey stick and a uh, tennis ball, but that is an abbreviated version of croquet. All right, so let's take a closer look at the course here. You see the starting stake there, so that's where I began the game, and this was the first wicket on the course, so I was trying to get that ball to hit that first wicket. If it did hit the wicket, I would shoot again before my opponent. After that first wicket, I'm moving on to the second wicket, so again, the ball getting it to try to hit that wicket with the least number of strokes, the number of uh, times I contact the ball. There's my third wicket. And here I had my turning stake. So from the turning stake, once I hit that turning stake, I would then come back through the course in reverse to the start. Now that image on the screen is a traditional croquet set. So you can see that we've got six mallets there, the sticks that you would use to contact the ball. There's different colored balls there based on the different teams in the game. Um, in the background there behind the mallets, you can see the stakes that would be used at the beginning and then the halfway point, the turning stake. And you can see the wickets there, those white wire pieces. Those would be used as the, the wickets within the game that you're trying to get the ball through those wickets um, in a traditional game of croquet. All right, so that's the game of croquet. Now it's your turn to get outside in your backyard, go to the park, wherever you find a safe place to play, and give it a try. Thanks, everyone.